Perfectly fine with me. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Behind the Harvest podcast. Chase is large in your screen there. Uh, it's a Monday morning. How are y'all doing? Was that a fat joke? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> I'm kind of self-conscious about that. <laughs> No, there's no no, no fat joke. <laughs> I mean, this lighting is for a couple of weeks. Who am I kidding? I'm going to eat. This lighting does me no favors. So, especially on a Monday. Mondays, y'all. Mondays are just uh, tiring. Just tiring for just after Sunday and all that stuff. So, if you're watching, if you're listening, just know Mondays are tiring. Yes. but it's all good. But we here. So it's good to good to have you guys. Thanks so much for watching. We'd love for you to share the podcast and like, subscribe, do all those things, uh, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on your device. We're so thankful you're here. We're going through this series, The Space Between Us. We're talking about some issues in our culture, um, you know, especially division in our culture. We've talked some of it is political, some of it is just cultural, some of it's just really trying to take some themes of the faith and apply it to today. And so today we're going to talk about faith and fear um, and kind of this idea that we live in a very fearful culture, a very fearful news cycle. Um, and that fear is really that mechanism, mechanism. See, it's Monday. I'm creating words mechanism, word. yep. uh, to, uh, to bring about division and all those kind of things. So what are your guys' thoughts? Faith, fear, you know, just roll with it. Well, I think it's a, uh... Inter- not interesting time, but kind of a convenient time to talk about faith over fear, especially with the the storm aftermath that some of the East Coast is facing right now in North Carolina, Tennessee, and some of the upstate of South Carolina. Um, you know, I know some folks who were out in Tennessee um, who were traveling home who live in, uh, you know, the western part of North Carolina. And she um, posted on Facebook, you know, we're headed home today. Um, wanted to do our best to find a route home. You know, probably won't have cell service. So I'm telling y'all now, you know, that we're headed that way. And um, I, when she, they had power when they got home, actually. And so she posted that they had made it home. And I almost commented back to her and said, you know, I was so afraid for y'all on your way home. I was fearful. And that was yesterday. And, you know, you preached this message yesterday morning about you know we combat fear with faith Mm -hmm. and um and i had to i just didn't even say anything at all because i was like i'm not gonna even speak that fear into this situation while there's already so much fear out there you know and um and it's a lot easier said than done but um but i think that um in the world that we live in especially with the circumstances of you know some of our surrounding states um this is literally, we have nothing but faith, you know, and and those poor people that are stranded. I mean, they have nothing to hold on to, but faith and, you know. Yeah. 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 I mean, like not um, like take it out of the political spectrum, take it out of the, um, you know, world events spectrum, take it out of the personal deal. Then all of a sudden you have, a natural disaster. And so then that yeah. just adds another layer to it. Right. So it's like, a, it's, I was just, I rambled a little bit, but it's just a convenient time to talk about this, I guess is what I was trying to say. Yeah. 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 So Kayla, you're a psychologist. So talk a little, talk to the audience a little bit about the psychology of fear. Okay. <clears throat> There's two primary aspects of it. One you have cognitive and the second one you have chemical Um, so in the center of your brain, you have the amygdala and your pituitary gland, and it's protected very well by the rest of your brain because it's very important. Um, your pituitary gland is responsible for hormone regulation, which is going to be oxytocin, vasopressin, uh, love hormones, all that stuff. Your amygdala is the fire alarm center. If you've ever seen the movie Inside Out, very good depiction of the amygdala. My daughter loves Uh, that one. Yeah. Um, If you have not watched it, 10 out of 10 recommend. And you have a whole bunch of chemicals in there that are going to regulate your emotions and your mood. So that's going to be dopamine, um, serotonin, cortisol, all that stuff. 
And it's very weird because sometimes they kind of cross talk a little bit. So like if you watch a scary movie, you're very aware it's not real. You kind of enjoy it, but it's also kind of scary. So it does get a little complicated. But what typically happens is you encounter a stimuli that is scary. For some people, it is psychological. For some people, it is physical. So natural disasters like Chase was talking about. And then you have a thought response. So your chemicals go a little crazy. And the fire alarm goes off in your brain. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is bad. So you either freeze or you run or you fawn. And um, when that happens, you have cognitive thoughts. So that's the other part of it of like, what if this happens? What if that happens? Or you have a a very intense emotional response to an event and then you associate it that like, that's always going to happen. For example, Mm -hmm. people that get in car accidents, they have a really hard time driving again. So typically what happens is you have your chemicals get all out of whack. You get stressed out and then you have all these negative thoughts kind of floating around in your head and then everything just kind of falls apart to a point, unless you regulate and manage well. That's good. Are you charging for that information? Are you billing? You know, I'll bill it. The people listening. (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it kind of reminds me of like Sarah teaching me, you know, one of her counselors one time said, look, all emotions um, are like, emotions are real and then they're they're true, right? Mm -hmm. So all emotions are real. So like if you feel fear over something, that is a real emotion, right? It's, you are feeling it. So it's not one of those situations where it's like, oh, I need to just suppress it. And I need to just, you know, I just need to have faith in this moment or whatever. No, the the feeling is real, but I think where we can discern and use the power of God's word and the Holy Spirit and prayer and all that is, but is this actually true? You know, is this is this a really true outcome? Is this something I, f- I really feel it? But is this real, really true? Is it really true about me? Is it really true about the circumstances? Is it really true about the state of the world? Is it really true about the hurricane? Is it really true about um, who wins in November? Is it really is it really true? And I've always found that that's very helpful because you know when you're feeling these kind of fears or whatnot. And and that is, you know, um, an emotion or whatever that I believe inside out two talks about, Uh, maybe that's anxiety, but, um, so if we're just giving them a plug, there you go. Um, they sponsor us. Disney haters will not like this podcast, but that's okay. (laughs) Um, nonetheless, uh, but you know, it's kind of one of those things where we have to begin to discern, you know, like, is this a real, is this true? Um, and then not feel bad for feeling it like it is real. We all have fears, but it doesn't have to be true. I think the illustration I gave is like, uh, yesterday, my grandmother would put us in a car and put a towel over our head when a thunderstorm was coming because heaven forbid there'd be thunder and lightning. Well, it, she might feel that fear, but I mean, think about it. it. How many thunderstorms have you been through and never been struck by lightning? Like, it's not really true that it's a threat. Right. There's been a, hundreds of thunderstorms that I've been through. A very small percentage of them have turned into tornadoes. Very small percentage of them. So it, it's real, but it's it's not necessarily true that, that you're in danger of a thunderstorm. Right. And so it's like we have to be able to discern. And the great thing about being believers or followers of Jesus is that you have the Holy Spirit to help you with that, right? And so, but I do think it's important to note that like it's okay to feel the fear. Right. You don't have to shame yourself and be like, oh, my gosh, I don't have any faith. And oh, my gosh, I just need to have faith. You can you can you're going to feel the fear. Right. And uh, but we can discern true or real, um, which I think is important. Um, so what's like a aspect of faith that you've had to have before when, when facing something that's fearful in your life? When is a time that you've had? to kind of exercise faith. And we'll talk about that, right? We'll talk about exercising faith or that's a churchy term, but like, what does that actually look like in real life to do that? I think something that's been beneficial um, very early on when I actually met you, Rev, um, (laughs) you, we were dealing with a situation and you shared with me about the real versus true emotions. And that has helped me in my personal 
feelings and fears and anxieties to assess and say, okay, is this really as bad as I think it is right now? You know, <laughs> uh, you know, and me and my wife, we laugh and she, we were just joking the other day about, she's like, I'll freak out for the first 30 seconds. It's really bad. And then I can come down from that. I will stay on something for a long time and think about every possible outcome, you know, that everything I will think about everything that could go wrong with something. Yeah. And so I have to sit and kind of assess the damage and make sure that yeah. things are and realize that things are probably not as bad as I think they are. Um, we were visiting a church a while back and the pastor preached um, on this met on this scripture. He said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. And he mm. was talking about the a refuge and a place that you can go to. And I know that a lot of times in the natural, physically speaking, we have to talk about, um, we have to, like, like I said, there are practical ways to deal with fear, but there's also a spiritual aspect to that. You know, he said, when the things of life and you feel like the enemy is just attacking you, when you get into that refuge, um, that, that strong tower, um, the, and he, and he said that that refuge is the presence of God. If you can get into the presence of God, he's like, the enemy cannot touch you. Like the enemy cannot, you know, as children of God, I don't think, I don't believe the enemy can touch us at all, but he can (laughs) try his best to scare us into you know, terrorize us to Mm -hmm. cause fear and to use that fear to distract us from our um, kingdom purpose. Right. But if we can get into that refuge, if we can run into that, that, you know, the name of the Lord, if we can run into that strong tower, that refuge, that, that secret place, um, he will renew and restore and he will calm the fears that we have that are much too big. I've prayed before, sometimes just walking around the house, like, Lord, this is too much for me. And Mm -hmm. I do not like, I've tried every practical mechanism. I've thought about it. I've talked about it, but God, you're going to have to calm me because I can't do this on my own, you know? And so if you can get into that secret place with him, he will absolutely take those fears and, you know, yeah. and they may come back later. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you may calm them for yeah. a minute and in three weeks you're thinking about the same problem and you're scared yeah. to death, but you run right back to that secret place and you let him take him one more time, you know? Yeah. So that right. helped me that day that, um, you know, we can, we have a place that we can go when we yeah. are afraid, spiritually yeah. speaking. And, um, you know, we have people that we run to and that we go to when we are afraid in the in in, our, in the earth when we're in the physical and the natural whatever you call it but spiritually we have a place we can go and that'll protect us not only spiritually but emotionally and physically because we yeah. will go crazy and you know start getting sick because we're so stressed you know he takes yep. all that um so I'm, I'm thankful for that yeah that's good it's good um i've all like always struggled substantially uh with my mental health and anxiety um i have diagnosed ocd um but ever since i was like 19 or so it's kind of been a up and down struggle you know and uh there have been nights where just you know i'm in laying in bed watching the ceiling fan just go around and around and around and around and my brain feels like that too um or I'm like plagued with intrusive thoughts or, or fearful things. And honestly, there's no negative emotions. It's all just a spectrum. Like no emotion is inherently bad. Um, but I always go back cause I'm a very visual story driven person. I always go back to when Peter walks on water and I feel like that a lot. So I'll be walking and I'm like, I got you, Lord, I'm watching you. And then all of a sudden I start sinking. And the next thing I know, I'm like drowning. And then he pulls me out of the water and I'm choking on salt water. And he's like, you'd be fine. You just got to trust me. Um, and that's kind of how it is for me a lot. Like I I forget that it's okay to not feel in control sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, It's okay to not understand my emotions. But there, there are times where, you know, I stress out because I'm like, God, I don't know what to tell you. 
And it's biblical to say like, hey, the Holy Spirit just needs to intercede right now. I don't have yep. words. Please just cover my heart and my mind and help me get a good night's sleep. Well, and I love, so Josh, you were preaching yesterday about Jesus being asleep in the boat during the storm. Yeah. And, um, and I love so much that you made this point um, that it wasn't the storm that woke him up. It was the, it was the cries of his children. It was the yeah. cries, you know, um, and I, Allison and I have sung a song that kind of speaks about that, that he knows your voice. And when yeah. you're in the storm and it seems like Jesus is sleeping and he just doesn't care at all, you know, um, because one, he's not really worried, so he can rest. Right. But we're That's up. Right. And yeah. uh, but uh, that it wasn't the storm that got his attention. It was the cries of his people. And so yeah. if, if we could just remember that all we got to do is call his name. Yeah, you know? that's right. Well, call his name, you know, get, get, a, get his attention, you know, and I, I think it's important to know you want to get God's attention, worship, you know, yeah. wherever you are, you ain't got to have no music. You can just say, Lord, I love you. I praise you, God. I need you right now. You know, like all just worship him because you want to know something. If, if you're, if your children want your attention, they're going to, they're going to walk up and just lift up their hands and you're going to pick them up. Right. Yeah. They don't even have to say, pick me up. They just walk up and look at you and you know to pick them up. And so if, if we, if, if we do that, God's going to, he's going to, he's going to get in on this and he's going to help us, you know, it, it, it'll wake him up. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I think that's a great point. And, um, it is true. One, one thing I, you know, um, we, you know, when we think about like fearful emotions and thought patterns and stuff like that, you know, we don't, um, subconsciously or naturally go to dwell on what is positive. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if you wake up in the middle of the night, it's like scenario one leads to scenario two leads to scenario three. And then, the, and it's like the worst case scenario. Yeah. I think another thing, you know, is kind of like, um, you know, like Romans 12, two says, you know, don't be conformed to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And yes. I think that there's a part of this that we have to train our mind to think contrary to what is natural. Yes. Right. Um, yes. Because the world is going to be speculative. The world is going to be fearful. The world is going to be sensationalized. Right. But as believers, we have to have our mind renewed and we have to intentionally get out of old thinking patterns yes. because what happens, I think neurologically in your brain, how you think it, it carves out roads, mm -hmm. right? And the roads lead somewhere. And so you have to make new roads that actually lead to something different. And so it's also just being mindful too of, you know, like, Hey, I need to, I need to intentionally think differently about fearful situations about scenarios about any of those things i'm i'm not naturally going to go there yeah i'm, I'm naturally going to go to the worst case scenario i'm naturally going to go to the fear place so i have to intentionally renew my mind to think differently as a person of faith as yeah. a person who's following jesus i have to renew my mind to think differently because when you have faith in christ your perspective does change of how you view how you view things in your life. Right. Mm -hmm. And it goes down to that faith. It goes down to that relationship. It goes down to all, all these things that we're talking about. Well, that, um, that's yeah. like what cognitive behavioral therapy is. And that's a very big counseling <clears throat> theory and mechanism that's used. So a lot of times clients will come in and say, well, this stinks about my life. This is terrible. This is this. And then as a therapist, you use something called cognitive restructuring and reframing and you take yep. that thought that is negative and you at least move it into neutral or hopefully positive territory and yep. that's how and your brain will literally change those neuropathways. pathways yep. and i completely think cbt is biblical um and what you have to do is you have to acknowledge the fear or the emotion or whatever you have and yep. then you have to actively accept it, acknowledge it, but resist against digging yourself deeper in a hole. 
Yeah. You know, so you have yeah. to really push push your limits too. Like that's how growth happens. And for a lot of people that is leaning on the Lord more. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Hey, I need I need to stretch myself. And it sounds so like you don't want to sound like so cliche with that, but like like sometimes you do just have to give it to God, you know? Yeah. Like and that that's really hard to like especially for people who are super practical and like, okay, well, how do I do that? But like you don't want to sound like super churchy all the time with people who are really struggling, but like sometimes you just have to sometimes you just have to give it over to the Lord and let him work it out. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about this one scenario. And we may end on this one, but like, um, you know, the last, you know, in Colorado, when I was pastoring, we were building a building, the, the wind shear came, blew the whole thing down, right? As we had the trusses up and everything, just a, a massive blow, like just uh, emotionally, psychologically. Um, I remember that day I was, I mean, I was probably on the phone for six and a half straight hours. Finally, a mentor of mine called me and I think I sat on my steps and just, sobbed you know i'm just like i mean it's overwhelming so then i drove the, drove my truck um there was a little cul-de-sac and i drove my truck and the cul-de-sac sat up a little bit and i could look down on the site and i just sat there and i cried and i told him i told the lord i was like listen um you know you're gonna have to do this right you're gonna have to do this because i i'm out like i don't i'll have nothing left like you're gonna have to you're the one that led us to do this okay, this happened. So now you're going to have to rebuild it. And I'm giving it to you like hands off. And I remember the builder called me the next day. He's like, well, meet me at the church on Monday morning. And of course, you know, thinking about this, all of a sudden here, I'm fearful. Like he's, he's had it, he's done, he's out. We're going to have to start this whole process over. This is going to be a colossal failure. Right. But this is where we talk about having to combat that fear and, and renew your mind because it never dawned on me for two days that maybe he was calling me with great resolve. Right. Like I handed it over to the Lord and said, you're going to have to do this. I got a phone call. But initially my mind goes to the negative. He's quitting. He's out. He's dropping the job. And now we are just let, like it's going to be any. He, and he met me that Monday and said, I'm resolved to, to rebuild this if you'll still have me. And I'm like, absolutely. He's like, and we'll and we'll get it up faster and blah, 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 blah. blah. And he it happened or whatnot. But it's a, it's another example of when something happens, even when you give it to the Lord, it's you're still capable of having some fearful thought patterns, right? And and all that. And so it's just an example though, that sometimes you do just have to give it over to the Lord and let him work and mm-hmm. let him move um, and just, and really just trust him. And like you said, I think at the beginning, Chase, like it doesn't mean the fear is not gonna pop up again. It doesn't mean that you're, that you're just gonna have this just peaceful sleep from now on. You might have to do some battle in your mind and in your emotions and in your will you might have to fight for that that belief. You might have to fight with the Lord a little bit. You might have to fight with yourself for a little bit. You might have to fight with some things that get brought up from your past a little bit. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, you have to just believe and hand it over to him. I believe that he's got your best interest in mind and that he can overcome the scenario and overcome the fear. So, you know, um, look, it's a, it's a very fearful, you know, it's a very fearful, fearful time, um, but it's also a very exciting time. Mm -hmm. Right. And there are things that are happening that we never thought would happen. And honestly, these kind of times are are times that generations before us had waited on and had prayed for and wanted to see and and all that stuff. And we get to live in it and we get to go on the journey with the Lord. So I certainly hope uh, the podcast has been helpful to you. Hey, if you're watching this and you're like, man, I want to know about the sermon. um, You can also go on our YouTube page, Harvest.247, and you can check out all of our sermons that we've given and especially in this series. There is one about faith and fear. We would love for you to check that out. We'd love for you to share this. We would love for you to comment, um, do all those things to help us get the message out. We appreciate you listening wherever and whenever you're listening from. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.